Hey everyone, James with TFB TV, and welcome to another episode of Thunder Rants. Thunder Rants, of course, named after Thunder Ranch, perhaps the premier firearms training institute in the United States, run by the man himself, Clint Smith. Pretty sure he's my long lost uncle. But I'm going back to Thunder Ranch in a couple of weeks, and that reminded me, hey, I've got one more episode in the hopper of Thunder Rants. So I trained there last year, and you just hit record on a camera. Clint Smith, guaranteed, is going to drop some knowledge bombs on you, and they're also going to be hilarious. So he'll be talking about one thing, and all of a sudden he'll start talking about why <laughs> swimming in knee-deep water is dangerous, you know, or like why he hates horses, you know, whatever. It, he'll just turn on a dime from one topic to the other. And I was like, man, this is too good. And it would be a shame if TFB TV viewers didn't get to see it. So that's where the concept for Thunder Rants was born. Since I'm gonna be there in a couple of weeks, I needed to run another one of these. I need Clint to watch it and remember why he hates me. So maybe we get some, uh, some extra energy whenever we're training over there in Thunder Ranch. So we're going to be bringing you more of the How to Win the Fight series from Thunder Ranch. We're filming more content there, and we will have a very special guest, a fellow YouTuber that you guys are big fans of, is also going to be on the course with me. But stay tuned for that. In the meantime, Clint, take it away. I take cops and put a revolver on the table, and they all sit there, it looked like I put a dead skunk. They have no fucking idea how to load it, how to unload it, they don't have any idea about it. Because basically, you're a generation of polymer, okay? All your shit's plastic, okay? Or I have a Glock that has 12,000 rounds in it. Mm, why? I can shoot a lot. Here's the thought, why don't you shoot good? Okay? People go, well, I got more ammo than you. Well, here's a thought for you. That means I practice loading the gun twice as much as you do. And if you shoot a Glock tail style ammo, I'll bet you're in a shit sandwich and you're ass deep and use grenade rings, okay? I bet you're gonna poop yourself getting this thing loaded. And Clint practiced loading his pistol twice as much as you. Well, those revolvers are old. That doesn't mean they're not effective, okay? So try to open your mind and look at different things. And you've all met this asshole who goes, well, it's a five shot, two special, which is the worst gun in the planet for anyone to defend themselves with. Okay, well, if I can't do it in five, it can't be done. Bitch, there's six of them in the zombie apocalypse. You can never have too much ammo. I carry a lot of ammo. I don't carry a lot of ammo so I can shoot. I can shoot, but that's not why, that's not why I carry spare mags. You know why I carry spare mags? In case the magazine in the gun takes a shit. When I was a very young baby cop, I went on a gun call, pull up, I was all tactical and shit like that, okay? And when I started to get out of the car, seat belt, keys came out. Woo, I'm rocking. Started to get out of the car, it felt like a tug pulled harder, and my base plate had caught on a string wheel. So it ripped the base plate off, the spring came out, the follower came out, and all the rounds came out in the front seat. I got out of that police car with the world's most expensive single shot 1911 fucking pistol. So it was really nice, push the button, hole falls out, new mag goes in. Shit can go wrong, gotta have spare ammo, okay? How much ammo? I don't know, how long do you wanna fight? It's really funny, if you take brand new people, they don't know nothing about guns, and you start a rifle down, a pistol down, you open the door and go, in three seconds, the guy's gonna come through with a big machete and try to chop your head off, and you go pick up the gun you wanna fight with to pick up the big gun, okay? Big guns are better. Probably the bottom rung of the ladder in your world, okay, would be the M1 carbine. 110 grain bullet, 1900 feet per second, we killed a million Germans and Japs with the son of a bitch. Weighs five pounds, okay? My 75-year-old mom used to walk down to the gate every night two miles carrying a carby. I go, yo, mom, something goes wrong, load the bitch. By the time you get to round 14, I'll be there. Okay? <laughs> I do not and would not advocate that you use pistol caliber what are called carbines. If you want a rifle, get a rifle. If you want a pistol, get a pistol, but quit dicking around in the middle ground. Probably in American martial arms, the coolest rifle, the biggest jump, like from wagon to space shuttle in one thing was the 3040 Craig rifle. 30 caliber, smokeless, multiple cartridges, bolt action, all that shit, man. We were like, whoa, we got it now, all right? Cool. Then the problem with that is you have to have loose cartridges. What do loose cartridges do if you're trying to sneak around and sneak up on somebody? They rattle. So then we needed a gun that didn't rattle, but we got the 03 Springfield with a five round stripper clip and put it in the top, shove it down, your shit doesn't rally anymore, you run the gun, you're good to go. 
If you really want to get good at shooting, get a flintlock. Because you got to pull the trigger, set your face on fire. Then you got to hold the gun long enough to have the bullet go down the freaking barrel. So then you're, you, if you watch it like the movie Patriot, whatever, okay, you'll see them, they all load the guns in there. Everybody points, and everyone goes, like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's because your face is on fire, stupid. Okay, it was, wasn't a really good design. Well, what happened? I was shot, and then my face was on fire. Okay, cool. That muzzle brake is awesome. It's, it basically quells the stunning recoil of the 223 rifle. They're cool, but they're loud. Now imagine shooting that bitch in that hallway without no ear pro. You look like Elmer Fudd in a Bugs Bunny movie, Smack the Tree. Here's what happens like if you shoot that shit. This is what happens immediately after you pull the trigger. Bang! Ah! In your ear for about two weeks. Okay, and if you're fighting in the dark, that'll be a shit sandwich. You're gonna be 250 on the heart rate, pooping your shorts, okay? And you're gonna be like, people go like, we own the night. Boldly spoken by people who haven't fought in the fucking dark. Fighting in the dark sucks, okay? So turn the freaking light on. And if I have to turn the light on, I want my light to always be the same. I take it off my pistol, put it on my rifle, I take it off my rifle, put it on my shotgun. If I took every stock in America today and sawed one inch off of it, I wouldn't hurt anybody. If I took every scope in law enforcement and cut the power in half, I wouldn't hurt anybody. Dude, the average shot is 60 yards. Guy goes, I want a quarter minute of gun. Well, what do you give a shit for? You can't shoot a quarter minute. Okay, because you realize a quarter minute is actually eighth, right? Because that means he held center and the biggest the group got was a quarter, right? So the deal with it is, is like real simple. If I, I can't find a sniper shot that couldn't be solved by a two minute of angle gun. If that freaking gun will shoot in a group like that, okay, you solved your problem, okay? So we're outsmarting ourselves sometimes with technology, okay? You know the great thing about armor? You have to fight someone competent enough to hit it. That's the only way your armor works. If you get a trigger jerking bitch and it shoots you in the femoral artery, that really fancy plate didn't do jack shit, okay? Now, duly noted, if he hits the armor, that's really cool. But you have to fight competent people to do that. Everybody thinks the M1 Garand was the first military rifle adopted by a country, and that's not true. The Mexicans had one first. But the Garand's cool. Y'all know the M1 Garand, and I love that gun. Okay, he goes, six, seven, eight, ping. People go like, well, you hear that ping, they'll charge. Really? You think so? Well, here's the thought. In my time, I've been graced to know like two guys who fought at the Chosen Reservoir. He goes, Clint, when 3,000 Chinese are coming up the hill, banging on cymbals, blowing drums, throwing fucking hand grenades, you don't hear the ping, bitch. Mm -hmm.